everybody! In this video, I talk about how I had surgery to remove my thyroid cancer at the ripe age of 23. Check the timestamps along the video to skip to the part about this experience you want to hear about. I talk about the pain, the process, and at the end, there are pictures of what my scar has looked like throughout the past year. Um, please disregard my very low energy levels in the next clip. It is the day right after surgery. Enjoy! Hello sisters, brothers, and others, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So I know I went on a little hiatus, but I am back to tell you about some life updates. So if you are watching this for the first time, hi, I am Sarah. I have a, an abundance of medical issues, and today I am here to talk about the recent surgery that I just had. I have some notes on this piece of paper so I don't forget anything. But basically, yesterday, September 21st, I went in for a partial thyroidectomy because I have papillary carcinoma. So that means that I had a nodule on the left side of my thyroid and I got a biopsy done on it and it was malignant. So it is cancerous. So they went in for surgery. They removed half the left side that had the cancer on it and what came with it was also a lymph node so that was yesterday and i'm just here to talk about my experience with that in 2018 i had some blood work done and we noticed that my tsh levels were high so we wanted to make sure everything was okay with my thyroid function i got an ultrasound and found out that i had nodules on my thyroid so every year every year i would get ultrasounds to make sure that the nodules weren't growing well this one grew just big enough and i'm talking it is small but it grew just big enough to where they wanted to do a biopsy of it did the biopsy like i said came back malignant and here we are now so within the past month i went from finding out that the thyroid nodule was malignant to having the surgery so let's talk about the surgery yesterday it I went for surgery around 6 in the morning. I did not end up in the OR until around 7.30. So they check you in, they ask you some questions. You will then go back and get changed into a gown and you'll put on this cute little hairnet that you saw in the video clips I inserted. You will meet your anesthesia team. They will put an IV in your hand. That is where they typically like to administer the anesthesia. At least that's what my hospital that I was in did. You will see your surgeon. They will make sure that you are either having the full thyroidectomy or if, if you are doing partial, they will mark the side of your neck that um, will be taken out. And they will ask you this question a bunch of times just to make sure. So a lot of different people will ask you the same question to make sure that everyone is on the same page and that you are getting done what you believe you should be getting done. After you meet a whole bunch of people that are going to be in the OR with you, I was wheeled back. I did not receive any anxiety medication. I did not need it, but I know I've read online that some people do get anxiety medication before they get wheeled back into the OR. So once you're in the OR, they're going to put a bunch of little stickies on you just to monitor your heart rate. They're going to take your blood pressure a bunch of times. So you will have a blood pressure cuff on you, those stickies that I believe are to monitor your heart rate. And then what they did was they administered the anesthesia to me. They put an oxygen mask on and I just breathed straight oxygen, but the anesthesia was through the IV. And then once you are fully asleep, they will put a breathing tube down your throat. And they said that that breathing tube, that oxygen, like they were breathing for me. So I, my body was not doing the breathing for me. It was from the tube. And that is kind of what I believe gave me such a sore throat afterwards, um, or maybe not. I, if you've been to my channel before, you know I've had an 11 hour surgery and the breathing tube never, never really hurt my throat that much. Um, but this time it was very, very painful waking up and my throat felt like I was swallowing shards of glass and it still kind of does. <clears throat> but I will get to more of how I feel later in the video. <clears throat> so the surgery was two hours 
Um, it was a two hour surgery. I get out of there. The anesthesia team wakes me up. They're like, Sarah, wake up. And I'm like, oh, where am I? Right. But I was very alert after surgery. Very, very alert. Apparently they gave me ketamine during the surgery. That was the pain medication that they put me on. Um, so they must have read my chart and they knew that during my previous spine surgery, that is what I was given. When I got out of surgery and the anesthesia and all the medication wore off, I was in a pretty significant amount of pain. Nothing compared to spine surgery, but it was more painful than I had, had expected. And of course, I was emotional from medication. I don't know if you've ever had surgery before, but the medication might make you emotional. Oh, I also want to mention that you will not have a catheter. So if the surgery should be a max three hours, you will not have a catheter at all. And I also didn't have to use the bathroom <clears throat> at all. So when I came in, they made me... <clears throat> when I came in and I was talking to all the people before my surgery, they may make you pee in a cup. I'm not sure if that's just a feminine thing to make sure that you are not pregnant, but they will make you pee in a cup. So I did not end up peeing the entire time I was there and I did not have to. Um, that's just a side note. So don't worry about, oh, what if I like myself on the table or whatever you're not you're probably not going to uh, I just lost my train of thought where was I after surgery I was in a lot of pain and they offered to give me the nurse she was wonderful thank you my nurse um, she asked if I wanted any pain medication and I said yes and they put it through my IV now she told me it was ketamine no it was not ketamine uh, she told me it was fentanyl and I don't think I've ever been administered fentanyl before so she gave me a small dose of that. We waited a little bit and then I was like, this isn't doing anything. So she gave me another dose of that and I was just like, uh, I'm sorry, this is not doing anything. So then she offered Dilaudid and from my past experience with spine surgery, I knew that that would most likely help. So she gave me that and I was also feeling a little bit nauseous. The anesthesia made me throw up before in one of my previous surgeries. Um, so they made sure that we talked about that with the anesthesia team before I had the surgery. So then after getting out, I was administered an anti-nausea drug through my IV. And then I believe I also took an oral anti-nausea pill once the IV one did not work. So I was given all that medication post-operatively and it really did not help that much. Um, the outside is still sore the outside of you know like my neck is still sore and inside it still feels like i'm swallowing shards of glass <laughs> um yesterday it was very bad today i can manage it with tylenol and i also got sent home with five oxy so that was supposed to be like a one day supply of oxy and everybody might not get prescribed that they actually looked in my chart when I first got there and it flagged in my chart that I was a candidate to receive medication post-operatively. But when my surgeon was telling me about this, like when we were just in the room with her, she said that I would not be sent home with any medication. And I was like, girl, what? I was like, oh, you just want me to take Tylenol and Advil? Okay, we'll see. And sometimes at night when I wake up from sleeping, my throat is super, super dry, even though I'm drinking tons and tons of water. So it really does come in handy. And if you take that with Tylenol, it works. The doctors said that it might be a little bit more painful in my situation because they wanted to make the incision as small as possible. So it really is, it is very, a very small incision. But because of that, they had to pull my muscles around and really pull to try and get everything out of there. So they were doing a lot in this little area here. That is probably why I am sore. Going back to yesterday, on the way home, we picked up my prescription. And while I was at the drugstore, I got throat lozenges. Now, did they, did they help? Yesterday, no. Today, yes. And then yesterday, I also picked up mac and cheese. I wanted soup. I wanted soup. They didn't have the soup I liked. So I picked up soup from Wawa. And I also got a slushy. At home, I tried to prepare a little bit and I got ice cream prior to surgery and I also got like popsicles. I'm not a big popsicle gal, so 
I got these kind of milk-based ice cream popsicles and they really helped. Today I went out and I did get the soup I liked. I did get it. And I also got Rita's. Rita's, I think, above all else. Rita's is the key. Okay, so skip the slushies. If you have a Rita's and it is in season, please go to Rita's. You are not supposed to move your neck. You're not supposed to move this way or this way or up or down. So if I want to move my neck or look this way, I have to move my entire body. So the entire body has to has to go with me, which means no driving for, I think they said as long as I'm not on that pain medication that I could drive um, after like two days. And I can't shower for 48 hours. Um, I think those are my only two big restrictions. I can return to work when I feel up to it. I took off work. Oh, got a new job. I am an eighth grade language arts teacher. Woo! Okay, I'm missing my students right now. But basically, I took off. I had the one the surgery on Wednesday. So I took off Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I'll have the weekend. I took off Monday, and I will return to work on Tuesday. So hopefully by then... I will be feeling a little bit better. Um, hopefully I'll be eating a little bit more solid foods. Yesterday, just from as my diet goes, I ate a slushy, I had some mac and cheese, and I had ramen, and then a popsicle. So that was my diet yesterday. You can eat the night before your surgery. Well, you have to stop eating at like 12. I stopped eating at eight. You can't drink any water up to two hours prior to your surgery. So I didn't have anything to eat or drink from eight o'clock last night until I got out of surgery and got home around 2 p.m. I know some people have a lot of hoarseness in their voice, but my voice, it, it kind of sounds normal right now. I do have some phlegm, so I will cough up some phlegm and that will hurt my throat a lot. But other than some phlegm, and a little bit of air pockets down below here. So if I press, it can become kind of sensitive and you'll hear kind of like a rice crispy popping sound. So if I do press there, there is some air from the breathing tube and just from having the neck open, air got trapped in there, but it should dissolve back into my skin rather quickly. So that's no issue there. Guess. This is what I would call my first day, my first full day after surgery. Doing pretty good. I'm going to hopefully keep the vlog rolling. We will check in periodically and we'll see how well I do when I need to go back to teaching on Tuesday. All right. Bye for now. Hello everyone, I am doing a check-in. So today is Saturday, I had my surgery on Wednesday and I just wanted to give you a few more updates on my symptoms that I have post-surgery. Last night I slept really well, but I did have this thing where I would wake up suddenly and start coughing. So it was almost like I was choking on my spit or something of the sort. And that also happened when I took naps yesterday. I have not coughed today much only when I talk for too long and then my throat dries out, so it's kind of like a dry cough. I did have phlegm the first day after surgery, but the phlegm has died down now, so when I cough, it is just a dry cough. Also, my pain has, do has gone down significantly, so yesterday I did Tylenol and Advil around the clock. I would alternate between those, and today I have only taken uh, Tylenol twice. So that is really good. My sore throat has gone away. It does not feel like I have strep throat anymore. Only the outside of my throat is sore. It is still stiff, sore, feels like it's bruised if you kind of touch above it or below it. And also my range of motion in my neck is limited. So I did just go out with my mom. We went to a couple stores and I did great. I feel great. I don't feel tired at all. And that is a very good sign. Also, I wanted to mention, and I don't think I mentioned this on Thursday, that I every time I would eat or drink something, it did feel like something was getting stuck in my throat, and I thought I was going to have an acid reflux reaction, but it kind of just would come up, like it would feel like something was stuck in my throat, and then it would go away. 
And one more thing I want to mention is that your burps might feel and sound really weird. Uh, it was like my body almost didn't know what to do with the burp that I was feeling with that like air in my, air in my throat and like the gas. Um, so the first day after surgery that Wednesday, I did feel like I had to burp after drinking a lot of water after surgery. And it almost sounded like a growl. It was very weird. Like my throat didn't know what to do with it. So if you just had surgery or you are going to, that is another thing you can look out for. Everything today seems to be going really well. I feel really good. I'm not tired. Um, I was really tired this morning, but I did get good sleep last night. So I'm not really sure why I felt tired. Probably just the effects of everything. Well, hoping to go up from here. I have my work starts again on Tuesday, so I am hoping I am ready to drive. I did not drive today. My mom drove because I do not have that full range of motion yet in my neck. Oh, I also took a shower today and that felt really, really nice. I just let the water kind of run down the incision and everything was fine. These should fall off within 10 days. That's what I was told. So hopefully that still happens. But yeah, that's pretty much it for now, and I will update you with the next check-in in a couple days. Bye! Hello everybody, sorry it's been almost a year um, since I even had this surgery, and even longer since I've last uploaded, but there are a few things in this video that I just wanted to add to. Um, one, you are going to be sent home with an ice pack, actually probably two ice packs. So you could have one in the freezer while one is on your neck. That tremendously helps. I had the ice pack on me almost 24 seven. I would fall asleep with it on my neck and I just, I needed it. It really, really helped. Um, second of all, I never updated you how going back to work went. So remember I went back on that Tuesday and then the week went great, but by Friday, I was absolutely tired, so tired, like I needed the weekend, I needed to rest. Um, but other than that, the week went really great. Everyone was so helpful and so kind. Um, staff, even the students, they were just like, oh, we're so glad to have you back. We didn't want the sub there forever, which was a great feeling. Of course, I forgot to say something because I'm me, but... Regarding your voice, I did lose the ability to sing and hit my high notes, and man, I love singing in the car, but every time I would sing higher than my voice allowed me to, it would crack, and I had never had that issue. I sang in chorale, chorus, all my life, all throughout school, and I never had that issue. I did not know if my voice would go back to normal, but it did. It did in about two to three months post-surgery, and I can sing all my high notes, and it's Gucci Golden now. And also I wanted to mention about the follow-up process. So after my surgery, I did not have an ultrasound until six months. They waited until all of the scar tissue has kind of, I don't, I don't even know what it does. What, what does the scar tissue do? Like, does it go away? I guess so, but anyway, they didn't want the scar tissue to look like a nodule or they just wouldn't be able to get a clear picture with all of that still in there. So six months, had the ultrasound, Everything looked great. I'm pretty sure I had blood work too, but I, I can't exactly remember. And then six months from that point, which has not come up yet, but will probably soon, um, I'm going to get blood work done, but I won't have an ultrasound until one year since my last one. So blood work six months after the last ultrasound, but not another ultrasound for another year. Um, I know with some cancer patients, they might do ultrasounds every six months, but maybe because they caught mine early and it wasn't a terribly big deal, uh, they're just going to wait the year. So that's all for now on my updates. I am now going to get into some pictures of my scar and the healing process. My scar, it looks pretty good, and I'm also going to show you some other pictures. Um, this lighting right now is absolutely horrid, so I'll just put in the pictures and do a voiceover, but that is all for now. My next video will be about my pituitary adenoma or the tumor on my pituitary gland and what is going on with that. But for now, let's take a look at some pictures. So here we have me pretty fresh after surgery. I still have my bandage on and I'm pretty sure that bandage held on tight. 
That thing stayed there until I went to my post-op appointment where the doctor then took it off. And then coming up, we have a picture in October and there will be a close-up soon. What it looks like here, it's pretty pink, it's pretty raised, it itched me a lot, and I didn't know if how raised it was was going to go away, but of course it eventually did, thankfully. And I did use a scar cream, it was a stick that I put on. Okay, so here, this is in April, this would have been towards my six month appointment, and not only is it diminishing in, in the redness and the color and going back to my skin color, but it's also diminishing in size. It's not as wide as it originally was, which I think is even crazy. And then here we have the most um, recent update and you can barely see it. I mean, in pictures you can, but it is nothing like it once was before. And I'm sure at my one year post-op, it will be even smaller, even more to my natural skin color, which is great. The doctors did an amazing job. They made the incision where my natural neckline was. So healing is going really, really well. I do use an SPF on my face daily and I make sure that I cover my neck and I cover the, inc the incision so the scar heals very nicely. You wanna make sure that you keep it out of the sun and do all of the things that your surgeon and your doctors tell you to do afterwards. But that's it for me. See ya!